The European guidelines are suggesting that we should be moving more towards non-invasive ventilation as a primary mode of respiratory support. And so we had been increasing our use of CPAP. And then if babies needed ongoing oxygen at a much later stage, we'd convert to nasal cannula low flow oxygen. But there was no happy medium between the two, essentially. I had thought of being a carpenter at one point because <laughs> it's so uh, you want to build something but with this you build families. It's an amazing job to do. The intensity of it, the immediacy, there's no time to procrastinate. You just have to make decisions quickly and you have to act quickly. It is tough at times, but to see the dedication, the passion that they have for what they do, that amazes me the most. It's a tertiary centre, so we take referrals from across the region. Our neonatal unit can go up to 58 cots, but we're very research orientated. The European guidelines are suggesting that we should be moving more towards non-invasive ventilation as a primary mode of respiratory support. And so we had been increasing our use of CPAP. And then if babies needed ongoing oxygen at a much later stage, we'd convert to nasal cannula low flow oxygen. But there was no happy medium between the two, essentially. There was issues sometimes with weaning babies. We had some, obviously, concerns around seeing babies with sore noses. You could see they're often quite uncomfortable. It's really important parents are heavily involved in all their care, but often parents are very anxious about touching their babies. We weren't the first units in the region to actually start using high flow. In 2012, 2013, we started seeing the results at international conferences, which changed our approach and made us think that now was probably a good time to start using the therapy. All of the research, you know, just gave us an extra evidence base on which we could then base our own protocol. They were 14 weeks premature. They've done really well, both of them. They met for the first time a couple of weeks ago and they laid them in the same cot and then being on high flow allowed that really because they, the machinery is so small they can easily transport it. So that was really nice because it's the first time we'd seen them together so it was like a really touching moment. It's nice to see them as a family without the nurse all the time in the background and they can actually get on with their little family and I think with the OptiFlow it just allows them to, to be for them for that period as well, to not ask all the time for help, to actually they be able to care for their baby and it's nice that we be able to step a little bit back. It makes it feel a bit more normal having a baby because when you have a baby that's premature all of the normal factors like giving them a feed and having cuddles you can't do any of that, so this is the next best thing. The biggest benefit is that it reduces nasal trauma. And this has been borne out in all of the studies that have been done. It's very important to recognise that actually these in their own way are quite complementary therapies and that a unit can't exist with just nasal high flow or just CPAP. I think you have to have a really balanced combination of both modalities if you want to give the best and the safest care. What we found is that people have very readily accepted it, that it's become very commonplace in its usage, and that people have become very confident in how to start it, how to manage it, how to make the baby most comfortable on it, and also importantly, how to wean it and when to stop. I think staff themselves feel more comfortable with it. You can see that because it's very simple to use, they feel comfortable, they feel competent. And parents pick up on that as well, and I think parents see their babies looking much less intensive or sort of critical than you can often do on a CPAP device. And then if they go home, and when they go home with positive outcomes, when you get the follow-ups, it's amazing to actually see that, and that's what keeps us going. If the staff reaction and the parental reaction is anything to go by, then I think it's going to become really a staple part of neonatal intensive care units.